the ways that prevails in a particular labor market is heavily influenced by labor supply and labor demand regardless of whether the market involves a labor union or other non market forces in this lecture we analyze how the interaction of supply and demand in the labor market affects wages and employment let's recall that the market demand curve and the market supply curve of labor which we discussed in our earlier lecture market demand curve indicates how many workers employer would want at each wage rate holding capital prices and the product demand schedule constant whereas the market supply curve indicates how many workers would enter the market at each wage level holding the wages in other occupations constant the interaction of these two forces in the labor market decides what will be the wage rate and what will be the level of employment so you can see in this graph the labor supply function which is a positive relationship with wage and number of employment and the demand function is having an inverse relationship with the wage rate and the demand for labor the interaction of these two decides that what will be the wage rate and how much of employment will be there in the labor market this is what we call the market clearing wage which means at this wage rate we wage rate all the workers those who want to work they get a job so there is no excess demand no excess supply there is no shortage of labor there is no surplus of labor and the labor market is having fully employed all the workers those who want to work at this going wage rate that's why it is called the market clearing wage rate let's try to understand what is going to happen if the wage rate is not equal to the market clearing wage rate let's try to understand what is going to happen when it is the wage rate is not we it is w2 or it is w1 above the market clearing wage rate or below the market clearing wage rate for example suppose the market wage rates were set at w1 at this low wage the demand exceeds supply at w1 wage employer will be competing for fewer workers in the market and a shortage of workers would exist the desire of farms to attract more employees would lead them to increase their wage offers this will drive up the overall level of wage offers in the market and as wages rose two things should happen first more workers would choose to enter to the market and look for jobs there will be movement along the supply curve second increase in the wages would induce the employer to seek fewer workers there will be a movement along the demand curve if wages were to rise to w2 then in this case supply would exceed demand at w2 wage employers would desire fewer workers than the number available and not 
all those desiring employment would be able to find jobs as a result there will be surplus of workers employers would have long line of applicants for any opening and would find that they could fill their openings with qualified application even if they offer lower wages furthermore if they could pay low wages they would want to hire more employees and some employees would be more happy to accept lower wages if they could just find a job others would leave the market and look for work elsewhere as wages fell therefore supply and demand would become more equal as wages fell from this level of w2 so the wage rate at which demand equals supply is the market clearing wage the wage rate we in the figure employers can fill the number of openings they have and all the employees who want jobs in this market can find them so at we there is no surplus and no shortage all parties are satisfied and no forces exist that could alter this wage the market is in equilibrium in the sense that wages will remain at we now let's discuss the demand how the demand and supply of labor decides the wage rate and employment in a market and how it translate to a particular farm as you can see in the figure in the panel a here we have taken the market demand and market supply for the labor and the demand and supply of labor in the market decides the wage rate and the level of employment in the panel b we have taken the supply of labor of a particular farm and the demand for labor of a particular farm and decides that what will be the level of employment in that particular farm and what will be the level of wage rate in that particular farm as we have discussed earlier the farms they are the wage takers so the wage is decided in the market based on the demand and supply forces and the individual farms they simply the they accept the wage rate so they have to pay the market clearing wage rate they have to pay the market going wage rate so the supply for labor for a particular farm becomes horizontal and when we superimpose the demand for labor of that particular farm simply you can decide that how much of labor the farm can employ with that going wage rate so the market decides the how much of labor is required in that particular market and this ol amount of labor is distributed within the farms those who are there in that particular market or in that particular industry with that going wage rate now let's discuss what would happen to the changes to the market clearing wages once it has been reached so the changes could arise from the shift in either in the demand or in the supply curve suppose for example the increase in the paperwork additional more government regulations of law industry cause the farms to demand more paralegals help them than before at any given wage rate then what will happen there will be a shift in the demand for this paralegals now earlier the demand for paralegals were this 
with the market supply. This is the wage rate for the paralegals in the paralegal industry or paralegal market. Now, to, due to change in the uh, some requirement, there is an increase in the demand for labor in this particular market. So, the new demand function has shifted to this position. Now, we are having a new equilibrium wage rate, market clearing wage rate, which is W E star. And the number of employment has increased. So, there is a shift in the demand function towards right results and increase in the wage rate and increase in the employment in that particular market. So, the greater demand would lead to a rightward shift of the labor demand curve. If W E were to persist, then there would be a labor shortage in the paralegal market because at W E the demand exceeds supply. So, this shortage would induce the employer to improve their wage offers. Eventually, the paralegal wage would be driven up to W E star. You can see in this case the equilibrium level of employment also has gone up. What is going to happen when there is a shift in the labor supply? Let us say the labor supply function has shift towards left. Now, earlier with market supply function and demand function, W E was the market clearing wage rate and this is the amount of employment in the economy. Now, because of reduction in the labor supply, the labor supply curve has shifted to left. Now, you can see the market clearing wage rate is W E dash and the level of employment. So, a shift of labor supply function towards left has increased the wage rate and reduced the number of employment in the market. The market wage can also increase if the labor supply curve shifts to the left as you can see in the figure. So, such a shift creates labor shortage at the old equilibrium wage rate W E. And as the employers struggle to fill their job openings, the market wages will go up to W E dash. In the case of leftward shift of labor supply curve, however, the increase in the market wage is accompanied by a decrease in the equilibrium level of employment. Let me give you one example. The example of uh, the black death and the wages of labor, an analysis of labor market effects of the leftward shift of the labor supply accompanying the black death which has happened during 1348 to 1351. What happens to the wages when the supply of labor suddenly shifts when the plague, the black death struck the England among other European countries in 1348 to 1351. These estimates may vary, but it is generally agreed that the plague killed between 17 to 14, 40 percent of the English population in that short period of time. This shocking loss of life had the immediate effect of raising the wages of labor. As the supply curve shifted to left, a shortage of workers was created at the old wage levels. And competition among the employers for the surviving workers drove the wage level dramatically upward. Reliable figures are 
had to come but many believe wages rose by 50 to 100 percent over these four years of time like a thresher for example earning 2.5 pence per day in 1348 or 4.5 pence in 1350 and mowers receiving 5 pence per acre in 1348 were receiving 9 pence in 1350 whether the overall rise in the wages were this large or not there was clearly a labor shortage and an unprecedented increase in the wages however a royal proclamation commanding landlords to share their scarce workers with neighbors and threatening the workers with the imprisonment if they refused to work at the pre plague wage was issued to deal with this shortage but it was ignored the shortage was too severe and the market forces were simply too strong for the rise in the wages to be upset you might be thinking about uh, the demand curve for labor did it not also shift to the left as the population and the number of consumers declined yes it did but this leftward shift in the demand was not as pronounced as the leftward shift in the supply while there were fewer customers for labor's output the customers who remained consumed greater amount of goods and services per capita than before the money the gold the silver and the durable goods that had existed prior to 1348 now were divided among many fewer people by 1350 and this rise in per capita wealth was associated with a wide spread and dramatic increase in the level of consumption especially for the luxury goods therefore the leftward shift in the labor demand was dominated by a leftward shift in the labor supply and predictable result was a large increase in the wages what will happen if there will there will be a leftward shift in the labor supply accompanied by rightward shift in the demand now you can see in this case there is a leftward shift in the labor supply but if it is accompanied by a rightward shift in the labor demand this will lead to a dramatic rise in the wage rate let's discuss about some of the barriers which disturb this equilibrium the barriers may be market forces the barriers may be non market forces non market forces like laws customs institutions laws like minimum wage laws institutions like unions they restrict the movement of this equal adjustment of this demand and supply however labor market adjust more quickly when market forces are calling for the wages to go up but there is a downward rigidity in the adjustment of the labor demand and labor supply a market clearing wage exists in theory this does not imply that it is reached or reached quickly in practice because labor services cannot be separated from the workers and labor income is the most important source of spending power of the ordinary people the labor market is subject to 
forces that obstruct the adjustment of both wage and employment to the change in the supply and demand. Some of these barriers to the adjustment are the result of economic forces that we will discuss in our later discussion. For example, changing in jobs often requires an employee to invest in new skills, cost of moving. These are from the worker side, these are the economic forces which create barriers for the adjustment. From the employer side of the market, hiring workers can involve an initial investment in search and training. Now let us try to understand what will happen when wages set because of this economic forces or non-economic forces, sometimes above market clearing wages, sometimes below market clearing wages, what will be the outcome, what happens? Let us try to understand. Let us try to understand the effects of an above market wage. In this graph, you can see the labor supply function and the labor demand function, they interact each other, decides the market clearing wage rate WE and decides the level of employment is X. Now, what is going to happen if the wage rate is set to be WH, which is higher than the market clearing wage. We can define workers as overpaid if their wages are higher than the market clearing wages for their jobs. Because a labor surplus exists for the jobs that are overpaid. A wage above market has two implications. First, employers are paying more than necessary to produce their output. They pay WH instead of WE. They could cut wages and still find enough qualified workers for their job openings. In fact, if they did cut wages, they could expand output and make their product cheaper and more accessible to the consumers. Second, more workers want jobs than can find them. Now, at this WH, why workers want jobs? but only V openings are available. If wages were to reduced a little, more of these disappointed workers could find job. So, a wage above market therefore cause consumer prices to be higher and output to be smaller than is possible. And it creates a situation in which not all the workers who want the job can get them. So, this is a situation which we call some of the workers are overpaid. Let us try to understand what is going to happen when the wages are set below the market clearing wage rate due to some of these barriers which exist either in the form of economic or non-economic forces. You can see the demand and supply forces decides the level of equilibrium wage rate in the economy is the WE and the amount of employment in the economy X. Now, let us say the wage rate that prevails is the WL which is less than the market clearing wage rate. We can define workers as underpaid if their wage is below the market clearing level. At below market wages, employers have difficulty in finding workers to meet the demand for the consumers. Therefore, a shortage of 
labor exist they have also the trouble keeping the workers they do fine if the wages were increased output would rise and more workers would be attracted to the market therefore an increase would benefit the people in the society in both their consumer and their worker roles now let's discuss another concept called economic rent economic rent uh, at the level of individuals however it is often useful to compare the wages received in a job with one's reservation wage the wage below which the worker should refuse or quit the job now what is economic rent the economic rent is the amount by which one's wage exceeds one's reservation wage in a particular job is the amount of economic rent for that particular individual let me give you one example the concept of underemployment and overemployment have to do with the social issues of producing desired goods and services in the least costly way therefore we compare wages paid with the market clearing wages at the individual level however it is often useful to compare the wages received in a job with one's reservation wages as i said the wages below which the worker will refuse the job or quit the job so the amount by which the one's wage exceeds one's reservation wage in particular job is the amount that's the difference the what he is getting and what is his reservation wage consider the labor supply curve to say the military as it is shown in the figure if the military is to pay higher l1 people it must pay w1 wages these relatively low wages will attract to the military those who most enjoy the military culture and are least adverse to the risk combat those kind of individuals will enter into the job of military at the wage rate w1 and their number is l1 if the military is to be somewhat larger and to employ l2 people then it must pay a wage of w2 this higher wages is required to attract those who would have found a military career on attractive at the lower wage rate so at l at w1 those who are finding it on attractive at w2 they find it they may, they may find it attractive so they can enter into this job so if w2 turns out to be the ways that equates demand and supply and if military pays that ways then everyone who would have joined up for less would be receiving an economic rent put it differently the supply curve to an occupation or industry is scheduled of the reservation wages and these reservation wages indicates the labor forthcoming at each wage level the difference between wage actually paid and the workers reservation wage which is cited in this figure is the amount of economic rent since each workers potentially they have their different reservation wages so rents may will differ for each workers in this market 
in the figure you can see the highest rent are received by those l0 individuals who would have joined the military even if the wage rates were only w0 so they collect the wage economic rent of w2 minus w0 so the point here is that why don't employers reduce the wage of each employee down to his or her reservation level so while capturing employees rent would seems to be lucrative since uh, by definition uh, it could be done without the workers quitting the job attempting to do so would create resentment and such a policy would be extremely costly that's why it is very difficult to implement it is not impossible to implement but it is very difficult let's try to understand why it is difficult to implement employers do not know the true reservation wage of each employee or applicant and finding it would involve experiments in which the wage offers to each workers either started high and were cut or started low and were raised this would be costly and if workers realize the farm was experimenting they would attempt to disguise their true reservation ways and adopt a strategy of behavior associated with bargaining like they can bluff so it is very difficult therefore farms usually pay according to the job one's level of experience or the longevity with the employer and consideration of the merits but not according to the preferences in the next lecture we'll discuss about labor supply we'll discuss about the workers preference between work and leisure how they prefer to spend their time and we'll discuss about hours of work decision thank you